So, continuing on the keyword research theme, we've got a session now about strategy from someone who I really rate. He does our training on SEO auditing. He's a real all-round expert. If we could have a huge round of applause for Stefan, please, everybody. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? Oh, come on. Really? This is a great conference. I want to hear some enthusiasm. Who's excited to be here? Yes. All right. So I'm going to talk to you about the four critical elements for the perfect keyword strategy. By the end of this session, I promise you, you will gain at least one gold nugget out of this session that you will be able to implement next week and make Boku cash out of. Okay, so that's my promise. But first, let me take a selfie, if you don't mind. This is a great opportunity. This is a pretty big stage, so let's do this. If you could uh, maybe wave your hands, smile, and here we go. Ready? One, two, three. All right, thank you. I know, cheesy, isn't it? As a little thank you, I've got a few free gifts for you for playing along. I've got my SEO bullshit detector, which has trick questions you can use to hire people or not hire them, depending on their answers. My SEO hiring blueprint, seven step process, some SEO myths, and chapter seven of this awesome book, The Art of SEO. Who's familiar with this book? Yeah? Who actually has it? Who wants to have it? Like, who, who wants it enough that they'll come and get it? Thank you very much. You're welcome. Early bird gets the worm. But I also have a couple other books. Social e-commerce, all about how to get um, social networks to do your bidding. Anyone? Anyone? Wow. No, you're, no, 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 no. She's going to get it. She did it. She worked hard for that one. And Google Power Search. Okay, you get that one. That one's how to find anything in Google, including confidential business plans from competitors, forced to research reports that normally cost thousands of dollars. And I've even found credit card numbers, files with credit card numbers with expiration dates that's not in the book. It's pretty crazy what you can find in Google. I ask, who listens to podcasts? Anyone? Great. So I got two fantastic podcasts for you to subscribe to, Marketing Speak and The Optimized Geek. That's me. I'm The Optimized Geek. And here's what we're going to cover in this session. We're going to go through the right and the wrong keywords, the types of searches, and how to slice and dice your keyword portfolio, knowing your target market intimately, and then finally, the keyword research tools that will do the hard yards for you. That's what we're going to cover. Let's start with number one in the four keys to the perfect keyword strategy, which is getting the keywords right, the right ones, not the wrong ones. Let's look at what the right ones are. These are keywords that are relevant, they're popular, and they're attainable. They're relevant to your business and to your industry. They are popular with searchers and they are attainable, we actually have a shot at ranking on page one, and ideally in the first half of page one, even top three positions, because that's where all the action's happening. What are the wrong keywords? These are keywords where it's like a trophy keyword the CEO is fixated on, or it's a keyword that's a synonym that nobody searches on. Let me give you a couple quick examples. This is from a past client, very frustrating situation. Westpac is a big bank in Australasia, in Australia, New Zealand, and their legal department, AKA the Business Prevention Department, said that they could not use the term mortgage anywhere on the website. Nope, it's a home loan that they offer, not the mortgage, that's a legal instrument. They do not offer the legal instrument, therefore you are banned from using it, marketing department, and look at the comparison here in Google Trends. Home loan is in blue there, practically flatlined nothing, and then mortgage is so much more popular. 
So that's very frustrating. Here's another example. Kohl's department stores in the US, they were fixated on this keyword, kitchen electrics. Who's ever heard of that phrase before, kitchen electrics? Anyone? Anyone? Exactly. And yet, they were so tied to this keyword, they were on page one for it, and it was a complete, an utter waste of time. So kitchen electrics, that's a small kitchen appliance like a toaster or a food processor, blender. Clearly, no volume, none whatsoever. I think it's all Kohl's employees who are searching for that keyword, and that's it. So number two in the perfect keyword strategy is to slice and dice your keyword portfolio by types of searches. There are different ways of slicing and dicing. One of them is looking at the types of searches, like informational, navigational, transactional, as you just heard in the previous presentation. Another way is to look at the funnel and identify where in the funnel the particular searcher is based on likely intent. So awareness, then consideration, then purchase, and finally retention. What if we could map these just basically automatically? Wouldn't that be cool? I'm going to show you a tool that does that in just a few minutes. Of course, there's the long tail, which gets a lot of play. It's, it's actually quite valuable. Even though the search volumes aren't there in aggregate, it can add up to a sizable amount of business for you. So the head terms, which are always so focused and, and we're just, um, just dying to get those rankings for, there tends to be a lot of competition. They are hard to uh, achieve a high ranking for. And the long tail has a lot more buying intent, typically. If somebody put a model number or a bunch of product attributes into that search query, they probably are pretty motivated to buy that thing, unless they already own it. And then step three is knowing your target market, knowing them intimately, really understanding them at a deep level, understanding them as people. It's beyond the demographics and the psychographics and even the sociographics. This is about getting to know them as individuals, even putting names to them, having stories about them, understanding their morning routines, their hobbies, their interests, their family. Just to expand on this a little bit, I forget if it's um, Adidas or Nike, but they have these life-size posters of teenagers that are their target audience, different teenagers, different personas, in this huge room with all these different lockers next to each of the posters. You can open the locker up. You can see how that person has decorated the locker, their sports gear, their lunch, their, their textbooks, their book bag. It's all in there. It's almost like full immersion. You can see their life-size poster and then their locker. Life-size poster and then their locker. Isn't that amazing? Once you get inside their heads, you understand their pain points, their challenges. What are their fears? What are their frustrations? And yes, you also want to understand what motivates them, what are the, the towards sort of motivations as well as the away from motivations. So fears and frustrations are away from. Wants and aspirations are towards. You can do a four quadrant, kind of a four forces exercise to map out what all these are, their fears, their um, frustrations, and so forth. And then you can in insert into the copy you're writing these triggers that, that bring them to that, that fear, that frustration, front and center. Get them to feel that pain, to feel the gap between where they are and where they want to be. But it all starts with identifying the right keywords where they're feeling the pain already and they're searching for the solution. And then topic mapping. So instead of just looking at your site architecture and figuring out, well, what are the keywords I want to map to my home page and then to my category level pages and then to my subcategory level pages, et cetera, to take it to another level and think of it as a thematic mapping. Let's say that you are selling music online and you're starting with the very broad keywords like, I don't know, music. Download MP3s, those sorts of keywords. And then you get down to the genre level, electronica, country, R&B, et cetera. 
The next level down might be subgenre. So instead of an electronic, it might be house or acid. And then even further, more deep down into this thematic tree, you have maybe a, a particular artist or discography, their album name, their, their song titles. And then finally, keyword research, doing the hard yards with the tools to brainstorm and to get the, the data for comparison purposes to build your portfolio. Because you don't want to just go with your gut. So let's look at how we do that. We're going to look not only at search volume, but also use keyword ideas, brainstorming tools. We're going to look at topics and entities instead of just the keywords themselves, because there are multiple keywords within an entity or a topic. Looking at trends, seasonality, for example. Looking at uh, geographic variants. So keywords vary depending on where we are in, in the world. So you guys say bespoke, and I say custom. And then also looking at your competitors, mining them for competitive intelligence, looking at their keyword portfolio in ways that they didn't even know was possible. So let's have a look at some of these awesome tools that are part of my tool set. And it's so important that you use a, a range of tools, not just rely on one or two tools. You're looking for corroboration across multiple tools. One tool might say that the trend is going up. Another tool might say it's going down. We'll start with keyword brainstorming, and then we'll move into the more hardcore tools, which will give us numbers. So we're just brainstorming. We're perhaps looking to create uh, a site navigation uh, structure, a taxonomy. Maybe we're looking to uh, uh, create blog posts, and we need content ideas. So we just turn just to Google, start typing, and we get autocomplete suggestions. That's Google Suggest. It's a great keyword brainstorming tool that's available all the time for free. And then we can take it to an another level and use a tool called Suval. Who's heard of Suval? Anyone? OK, not very many. Love this tool. It's free. Let's see how this works. <coughs> so we start, um, hold on one second. We start um, <coughs> typing, <coughs> and look at that. It's pulling in auto-suggestions from Google, Bing, Yahoo, YouTube, Answers.com, Wikipedia, and Amazon, all simultaneously. And these are all clickable. Once I click on one of these uh, search uh, suggestions, it'll take me right to the search results of that search engine for that particular keyword. Another great tool based, again, on Google Suggest is Uber Suggest. Watch what happens if I select a word here, like Brighton. So type that in. And then it goes through, it iterates through 0 through 9, all the letters of the alphabet for the next word, collects all the 10 suggestions from Google Suggest for each of those. So it includes, by default, Google Keyword Planner. I untick that box. And now we're just getting Google Suggest data. So we see things like Brighton and then 9th of May. Brighton Bands, Brighton Beach, Brighton College, Bright Brighton Council, Brighton Earrings. Right? Pretty cool. And then, of course, we can export that, pull that into Excel or whatever, what have you. Another fun tool that's free, that's quite useful, especially when you're trying to figure out featured snippets that you want to target and you're looking to create FAQs and that sort of stuff, is answerthepublic.com. Here's how that works. You see this funny looking guy that uh, starts picking his teeth or rolling his eyes at you. And you start typing your keyword in there. Let's do SEO. He's getting impatient there. It's pulling in data. These are keywords that are popular question-based keywords. Who, what, when, where, and why. Very pretty visual here. Not terribly usable, <coughs> so I like to switch to data view. So if you scroll back up a bit, and you'll see, click on the data tab, and now much easier view. We can download everything with that download CSV button at the very top right. 
We also get implied questions that are prepositions like in and within and, and through and near and to and for, et cetera. That's all downloadable as well. Anyone know where this data source is, where, what, where this is being pulled from? Anyone? Bueller? What? Google Suggest, thank you. I, if I had an extra book, I'd give it to you. Good job. This is one of my favorite brainstorming tools of all. It's the Topic Explorer from Search Metrics, part of the content um, experience suite from Search Metrics. Let's see how this works. I put in the keyword of avocado, and now I start uh, getting this visualization happening. The length of the line between uh, the, the bubbles is based on uh, semantic association and relatedness. These are entities or topics more than just a keyword. I can explode a keyword and see a whole bunch of other or topic and see subtopics underneath it. I can see the color coding is based on the different tabs that I choose, like um, where in the, in the buy cycle it is, like awareness and retention and so forth. I can also look at popularity, uh, color coding as well. I'm going to pick uh, guacamole here as the topic I want to explode and, and get more subtopics from. And then I can choose different topics to add to my list that I'm going to build a content piece around. So I go ahead and do that, and then I click on go to the content editor, which is this. And let's say I start writing an article from scratch, or I paste in an article like I'm doing right now that's a pre-existing article I'm going to edit. And you'll see there are, are a bunch of keywords over in the right or the left-hand column must-have keywords, recommended keywords, additional keywords. Those are all based on the handful of topics that I chose. So remember, inside a topic, you have a whole bunch of keywords. Pretty amazing. And then it tells you the readability score, the SEO score, and all that, all within this tool. Now we get to the hardcore tools that are going to give us real data and not just suggestions. Google Trends doesn't really give us numbers, but it does give us percentages, so it is useful for comparison purposes. So let's see how that works. We just put in a couple keywords, separated by a comma. Which one's more popular, laptop or laptops? Counterintuitively, it's actually the singular, not the plural, and that holds true month after month, year after year. Another cool little trick with this particular tool is that you can choose up here from web search, you can choose that to pull down and get to YouTube search. I don't know of any other tool that pulls data from YouTube other than the uh, YouTube suggest tool, which is built into the YouTube um, search box. Look at this. This is data coming from YouTube searches, and it's free within Google suggest, I mean Google uh, trends. Next, we have Google Keyword Planner, which a lot of people love to hate. Because, for one, if you are not spending money on Google AdWords, they have hobbled the tool and give you these horrible, ridiculous ranges like 100,000 to a million or 10,000 to 100,000. It's practically useless as a tool. But even if you are spending money on AdWords, it's so frustrating because they have traffic buckets and averages and they group keywords together and different things. They don't, you don't see any of it. They'll give you a number like 165,000. You think that's a real number. but it's a, it's a bucket number, and next bucket up is like 100 and, or 215,000 or something like that. And there's no number in between that they'll return. There's a great article on Moz called Google Keyword Planner's Dirty Secrets. I highly recommend you read that. Next is, speaking of Moz, is their Keyword Explorer, which is a relatively new tool, and I love this tool. Let's see how this works. So what we do is we put in a keyword, and we'll get not only a, it's a relatively small range, and that's because they want to give it within 95% accuracy. So I do appreciate that they are um, within a standard deviation here, so I don't mind the range in this case. They also give a couple of metrics that I love, difficulty and the, uh, the, the percentage of uh, CTR, organic CTR. So if there's a lot of stuff happening on the page, a lot of ads, a lot of SERP features, it's taken away clicks from the organic listings, and we can see that. And then priority, which also takes into account when we build a keyword list, our, our uh, importance scoring. So we can say 
by default it's a three, but maybe this keyword we want to give it a 10, and that increases that priority for that particular keyword when we're building keyword lists. So let's go to keyword suggestions, and one thing that is oftentimes missed is that you can filter down to just question-based keywords, which is great for your you know, featured snippet building and FAQ uh, building strategies. And then we have Rank Ranger Keyword Finder. I love Rank Ranger as a, uh, a tool set for tracking rankings. The Keyword Finder is just an, another great tool from them. So let's see how that works. Just choose questions in this case, or popular keywords. We can sort by relevance, we can sort by popularity, and there we go. Good stuff. And then we have SEMrush, which I love this tool set, and let's see how we can identify our competitors' featured snippets so we can steal some of those weaker snippets. So I'm going to put in a competitor here, or I'll put in Moz, not that he's a competitor, he's a friend, and, or, well, Rand is no longer there, but anyways, put in Moz.com. And then you can see here, if we go to organic research, a huge pile of keywords that they rank for, but I just want to look at the featured snippets that they have. So over on the right-hand side, you'll see featured snippets as a clickable link. Click on that, and it filters down to just the featured snippets, which is pretty amazing. And I'm going to identify those featured snippets that are weak because they're not in the right format. It's not the ideal format. Let's say it's a how-to sort of query and a better format than a paragraph uh, uh, featured snippet would be a list snippet, ideally a numbered list snippet. So we identify those. Also, you can see in uh, SEMrush the cached version. If the, this is very volatile space, the featured snippets. So if you want a featured snippet and maybe that they've already, already lost it, you can go back in time, look at the, uh, uh, at the cache. And then, Search metrics we already saw, uh, but there's also the research suite, which is amazing. And then finally, stat, stat search analytics. You can uh, do dynamic tagging. So I'll quickly show you a little bit in that. So you could say, well, just show me all of the featured snippets, the keywords that are featured snippets that are list type, and show me if I have rankings for any of those. So that is my favorite set of tools. So thank you very much. I'm Stefan Spencer, co-author of The Art of SEO. Again, there's my gifts. Thank you for your time.